Well, welcome to Course 165. This is our course on SQL Server 2008 and SQL Server 2008 R2 analysis services. Now, this is going to be a fairly long video because we're going to break down each chapter, kind of give you the what's covered in this course. Uh, so let me just go ahead and jump straight into it here. We've got 12 chapters to cover here. Uh, this course is going to tell you what it is, uh, why you need to know what it what, what it is, what it does, uh, and the how-to, how to install, how to design, how to build, how to deploy, etc. Right. Uh, the coverage of this is at the beginner to intermediate level. This is a, a fantastic course for those of you who are DBAs that are just now being asked to move into the uh, SSAS space, the analysis services space. Uh, you're being asked, hey, we've got a new vendor and the new product is analysis services based. We want you to manage it because it's a SQL server. Right? It's great for developers who want to get in on the hottest new thing. I mean, business intelligence, data warehousing, analysis services, it's the next big, big thing. Uh, it's, it's already here. Uh, it's a huge, huge area. So it's a great course to give you all of that information there. Now, uh, let me just kind of orient you here. Right down here, you see down at the bottom the page number. So we're on page three here. Page three is the first eight chapters. I couldn't really fit everything on one page, so I've, I've separated it to two pages. So I'm not going to just, I assume you can read if you want to. Um, what I'm going to do in just a minute is go through a detailed breakdown of each chapter, what it covers. Uh, so I'm not going to just read chapters that are listed here. We'll go through those. Just give me a couple of slides. Uh, we'll get through the breakdown. But pages three and four are just the the table of contents, the chapter listing, uh, if you will. Now let's talk about how the course is arranged. Okay? I design my courses so that you can parachute in at pretty much any single chapter and be okay. And what I mean by that is you could start with chapter 8, for example, and chapter 8 does not depend on you having the knowledge of chapter, or, or does not require that you have watched chapter 4, 5, 6, and 7. It depends that you've had the knowledge of those chapters. But it does not mean you have to have watched that particular chapter in this course. Now that may seem a little bit odd. Let me explain why I do it that way. I despise it when I go to the bookstore and I pick up a book and I'm just kind of flipping through it and I get to a certain chapter later on and it makes no sense to me because it says refer back to chapter four for information on how the custom blah 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 was set up and you'll need this on your computer to set it up. I want to be able to just pick up that book, turn to any chapter and be able to follow along as long as I have that knowledge, the prerequisite knowledge. And that's kind of the way that I design these particular courses. So they're designed that you can go grab the section that you need and watch just that section. You need to just install it, skip the chapters that aren't about installing, and just go to the installation. You're just interested in making uh, you know, dimension and measure design, just go straight to those chapters. Now, some of the chapters build on previous chapters. Uh, for example, uh, if you want to get to chapter 5, you need to have an understanding of chapter 4. It doesn't mean you had to watch chapter 4. It means that you need to have the understanding of chapter 4, which is what are multidimensional databases? How do they all work? Okay. And the same thing goes with chapter 6. If you want to start worrying about cube development, you have to understand dimension and measure design. Okay. So generally speaking, one would start from 4 and work their way. Uh, down the path through those. Right? Now to make it a little bit easier for you to pick a path through the course, I have arranged the chapters in what I've termed tracks. Okay, So a track is simply matched to a job title. So I'm kind of guessing that you're going to fall into one of the following job titles and based on 
the needs of that job title, I'm going to make a suggestion. Here's the course, here's the chapters you need to watch. Okay, that's the idea. Okay, so for system administrators, okay, we're going to talk about that in just a second, how I break down each of these. Uh, business intelligence architects, and you're going to see this used many times. So uh, BI, right? So anytime you see BI through here, uh, business intelligence. Okay. And then we would have the business intelligence analysts or the users, the end users of, ben, of business intelligence. Okay. So let's just kind of talk about those in the next video in more detail. We'll kind of break them down. We'll go through a, here are the chapters, here are the tracks, here are the chapters you need to take if you think you want to do this particular track. Okay. We're going to do that in the next video. This particular video, I want to get into telling you what each of the chapters covers. Okay. All right, so chapter one, you know, this is a fairly basic chapter. Uh, this is, you know, like the next video is going to say, hey, if you want to do the system administrator track, here are the, ch the particular chapters and the order you want to watch. Right? Same for the architects and the uh, users. Okay? A key part of chapter one uh, is for everybody. Okay? So it doesn't matter what track you're on. We have a set of sample databases and files that we will use for this course and I want you to install them. So we're going to do that in chapter one and okay, we're going to get that done. How to use books online, how to get comfortable locating help, locating information about it and oh sorry went forward one extra one. How to use the video exercises. We have video based exercises throughout the course where uh, I'll give you a an accompanying PDF that will has a, have a set of steps you will then accompany or try to accomplish the steps and I'll walk you through the solution. Okay. So we'll do our first one in chapter one. Okay. Now chapter two gets into some of the common terms that we're going to work with when we start talking about data warehousing and business intelligence. Uh, we'll talk about dimensions and cubes and uh, multi-dimensional databases and all that kind of fun stuff, right? Uh, so what is analysis services? Uh, what uh, is new in Analysis Services 2008? Those are going to be uh, key parts of Chapter 2. Chapter 3, you can probably guess with this title, How to Install SSAS 2008, System Administrators Track, right? Doesn't mean it's only for the system administrators, but that's who, the, who, who it is aimed at. So let's talk about the different types of installations we can go through, how to install a fresh copy of analysis services, or what if we're working on a machine that already has a SQL server on it, for example, how do we do uh, that? How does clustering work? Can we cluster analysis services? Okay. Chapter four, now we're more moving into the architect and possibly the end user track. We're talking about what are multi-dimensional databases and let's start designing our own solutions. We're given a relational database and now we need to add a data warehouse to it. So what are we going to be working with there? So where to put the data warehouse, uh, what the differences are between multi-dimensional and relational databases. Uh, we'll start talking about creating our own analysis services databases. That's going to bring us into the Visual Studio. So now we're going to start talking about projects and solutions, which I know some of you guys are already way comfortable with using SSIS or uh, C Sharp or Visual Basic or whatever. Uh, creating DSVs, data source views. Okay. Chapter five is, okay, now we have our analysis services database. Let's start talking about what's going to come into it. Let's start talking about designing the relational data warehouse. So we're going to talk about fact tables, dimension tables, the different schemas that we will work with, Snowflake and Star, uh, dealing with dimensions that have a balanced hierarchy, an unbalanced hierarchy, ragged hierarchies, right? We've got to talk about those things. Creating our dimensions, creating our measures, deploying Right? So when we're playing in analysis services, uh, playing in the Visual Studio, kind of local, now we want to actually deploy that to our server. Okay? 
Okay, so let me just pause. I know this isn't the most exciting thing to read through all of this here. Uh, I'm trying to kind of go through it a little bit quick. Uh, but, you know, at the same time, sometimes you just kind of give get given, this is a weird way to say it, but you kind of get given a list of things and you kind of got to go through them, right? Well, that's kind of where we are here. Uh, if you want to, you are welcome to just kind of scoot forward towards the end. I've got a couple of other things after we get through chapter 12. But just, you know, right here, you can kind of stick with me. It won't be but probably two, three more minutes until we finish up here. Um, in fact, I'll go ahead and get all those on the thing. Cube development, right? So you've done your dimensions. You've done your measures. Now let's build our cubes. Let's start browsing the cubes. Let's start now talking about working with reporting services, uh, a, a great client uh, for working with analysis services cubes. Then we're going to start talking about the other client tools. Maybe your users aren't using reporting uh, services. You want to use SharePoint. You want to use Excel. You want to use the new Power Pivot. Uh, which is one of my favorite add-ins right there. So we'll talk about how to play with all of those as well. Now, Chapter 9, this is going to be very important for those of you who are working with the architect side of things, and that's loading the data warehouse. How do we use SSIS with analysis services? What's the cube processing task do? What do all those options mean inside of there? Okay, so we're going to talk about doing the first time load of the data warehouse and then synchronizing the data warehouse okay. uh, processing uh, chapter kind of the tail end of the course here we're going to get into writing MDX multi-dimensional expressions uh, in, in working with SSAS we'll get into data mining with analysis services uh, and then we're going to talk about the final thing really more for the admins probably the security right how to lock down the cells comparing the various security models that you're probably already comfortable with uh, seeing how analysis services authenticates our users okay? so again sorry for the long-winded chapter breakdown but 12 chapters uh, it's it's a lot right so it's a pretty big uh, big course right? now listen you don't have to be a sequel guru this is a beginner to intermediate course so if you're coming into this with but I don't know what analysis services is that's fine I, that is absolutely fine you're going to be totally comfortable when we get into chapter two we've got a a long ramp up to talk about all of the key concepts about working with data warehouses and multi-dimensional databases don't let those terms get you a little bit nervous if i have queries that reports are going to be built upon you're not going to need to be an mdx guru or a sql guru to create that i'm going to give you everything that you need if you want your level of in involvement with the course can simply be that of watching it. You're not going to have to sit down and write all of this stuff. You can simply watch it and kind of absorb and soak it in. Of course, those of you that have taken my courses before, uh, particularly those with video-based exercises, you're probably well aware that, you know, I will encourage you to get your hands dirty, to start trying to think of these things on your own, but it's completely up to you how you want to take it. But I, I just want to make sure you're not intimidated about this course. Okay? Now there's a lot of other courses that go with this course. I wouldn't necessarily consider them prerequisites, but they they would augment your knowledge, if you would. Uh, the integration services course is probably the number one most related. <laughs> I guess. Uh, then followed by the queries course, the writing queries. Uh, then the reporting services goes perfect with it. And then the transact SQL programming would go with this one as well. Working with stored procedures, understanding data types, uh, things like that. Okay. Uh, this isn't, and I know I've said it already, but it's not an advanced course. Okay, If you know all those things that we talked about in the chapter list, this is not the right course for you. Uh, this is really targeted at the beginner to intermediate level. Okay. Oh, the final thing, and, and we're going to be done here, uh, is I mentioned this is going to cover both SQL Server 2008 and SQL Server 2008 R2. 
Now, it might be confusing to you. You might not be aware that there are two different products. But in fact, they are two different products. They're, they're two different SKUs, as we call it, SKU. Uh, you can buy them both. Okay? And a license for one does not imply a license for the other. Okay? Uh, so there's two different yet similar versions of analysis services. Okay, um, You only need to learn one of them. Um, SQL Server 2008 analysis services, you see the little logo right here, that's the actual product name. Okay? Released in the year 2008, if you are working with reporting services, you would be using Report Builder 2.0. SQL Server 2008 R2, you see the little R2 right up there. If I didn't cover it up, <laughs> sometimes my target... Uh, accuracy is not so great. I'll do it like that. Whee. Okay. R2, separate product. That's the actual official name. So this is release to. Okay. So it's a separate product, just like we had uh, Windows Server 2008 and Windows Server 2008 R2. We have SQL Server 2008 and SQL Server 2008 R2. Okay. Released in 2010. If you're working with Report Builder uh, for SQL Server 2008 R2, it actually uses Report Builder 3.0. And that might not mean anything to you. That's uh, It will when we get into working with reporting services later on. Okay, okay sorry for the uh, long video there, but I, I did want to make sure you understood what we're kind of, uh, what we're about to embark on. So I'll tell you what, next video we'll see is what tracks match with which chapters. So I'll see you in the next video.